Tobago is a beautiful island with a lot to offer. This week, we take you to Naughty Villa, located in the very peaceful village of Mount Irvin. Now here's a look at what's to come in the next half hour. I'm Davia Chambers and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Margaret Wright receives national award, workshop for beekeepers hosted in Tobago, and later details on the diabetic foot care session. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. We'll be right back. Stay with us. And it is said, it's the land of tomorrow. Princess Margaret say, come to Vigo for holiday. Now the whole world say, come to Vigo for holiday. Naughty Villa overlooks the Caribbean Sea as it's located between Grange Bay and the Mount Irvin Beach facility. Now the name of the property was inspired by the owner, artist David Knott. Meanwhile, in our lead story this week, after 54 years of service in the medical field, registered nurse Margaret Wright received the National Medal for her outstanding service to Trinidad and Tobago. We join Caroline Wallace at President's House to fill us in on the details. Retired nurse Margaret Wright of Runnymede Moriah has finally received the Public Service Medal of Merit Gold for outstanding and meritorious service to Trinidad and Tobago. She missed last year's Independence Day Awards ceremony, but President Anthony Camona presented her with the honor recently in Tobago. Ms. Wright has an impressive nursing career spanning some 54 years that has seen her selflessly assisting patients. She was a registered nurse a licensed midwife and a district health visitor, and has delivered over 200 babies at home. I came back and specialized in care treatment of people living with HIV and AIDS. And at that time, we had no treatment, so it was just physically caring for them. And until um, I assisted in forming the Tobago Health Promotion Clinic, where treatment was available. Ms. Wright has also been involved in a number of non-governmental organizations, such as credit union boards, Tobago Nursery Schools Association, village councils, the Tobago AIDS Society, the Diabetes Association of Tobago, just to name a few. So I grew up in, in the, a family that served the community, and we had to do that also. So that as time went on, I became involved in about 11 organizations serving in, not just as a member, but serving on the executive. And I found that that was very, very rewarding, especially when I went into nursing. Today, Nurse Wright is still very active. She's the visiting district nurse of the Tobago Health Promotion Clinic and she still cares for patients every day. She also provides direct observation therapy for several HIV AIDS patients. Nurse Wright says she's beyond humble to have received the award. It was a patient who I cared for for years, decided that he would just apply for it and see what will happen. Because um, I had two other organizations over the years did send in the nomination and it was never accepted. And this patient said, Look, I'm going to do it and let's see what will happen. And lo and behold, it was accepted. Nurse Wright received her award at President's House in Tobago. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. If you are looking for a luxury getaway spot for the vacation period, Naughty Villa is the place for you. It reflects a Caribbean style as guests have a view of the Caribbean Sea and the property is filled with beautiful flower gardens and large fruit trees. Now this, Tobago has an agency primarily responsible for developing the island's tourism product. The board of directors were installed recently and we have all the details in this next report. The Board of Directors have been appointed for the Tobago Tourism Agency Limited and will be led by Chairman Dr. Shuma Roberts. Dr. Roberts is a graduate coordinator tourism programs at the University of the West Indies, Cave Hill in Barbados. The agency was established by Secretary of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, Councillor Nadine Stewart Phillips, to serve as the policy implementation agency for tourism. 
It is responsible for sustainable development of the island's tourism product. It will also spearhead marketing, planning, and implementation. And it is expected to provide a boost for Destination Tobago in the regional and international marketplace. The repositioning of our economy with tourism as its center will therefore require us to coordinate actions in addressing a number of related issues, including improving existing and expanding the number of hotel rooms on the island, improving and maintaining the quality and expanding the range of other products and services offered to visitors, improving air connectivity between Tobago and traditional and new emerging markets. The goal is to reposition Tobago as a unique and more competitive Caribbean destination. The establishment of a company for the development and marketing of Tobago's tourism product marks the start of a comprehensive and holistic plan to re-energize the tourism sector and put the economy of Tobago on a more sustainable footing. The Tobago Tourism Agency's strategy will be to employ flexibility, responsiveness, innovation and resourcefulness in the marketing of Destination Tobago. How do we seize these exciting opportunities? It would require bold leadership and innovative thinking that takes advantage of traditional and indigenous knowledge. So Mr. Dillon, we really welcome you on the board. You have that institutional knowledge that we need and new technologies. It would require making decisions that might be uncomfortable in the short term but in the long term will allow the island's people and business community to reap outstanding benefits. The other members are Dr. Okola Cameron, Deputy Chairman, Dr. Salvan Hazel, Director, Ms. Hazel Roberts, Director, Ms. Sherian Edwards-Louis, Director, Ms. Joanna K. moses Wathka, Director, Mr. Nicholas Hardwick, Director, Mr. Randall Roster, Director, Mr. Sean Benoit, Director, Ms. Vanessa Boyce, Secretary to the Board, and Mr. Carlos Dillon, Ex Officio Member. The agency will enhance the contribution of the tourism and hospitality sectors to impact the overall socioeconomic development of Tobago. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. Overwhelmed by the ocean's view, the property owners decided to construct a villa to share that with guests. Now our climate is changing rapidly with a few negative impacts such as rising sea levels, extreme heat and extreme rainfall. In this next report, Omadara Mills tells us what we can do to help this situation. Here is more. Tropical storm breath damaged power lines, trees, retaining walls, roofs and other parts of people's homes after passing over Tobago. Now higher sea surface temperatures in the southern Atlantic Ocean a change that experts attribute to global warming, aided Brett's development from a tropical depression to a tropical storm. Globally, climate change and global warming is real, and one of the impacts that we are seeing is increased surface sea temperature water. Because of the dynamics of the way we use our energy resources and we put hydrocarbons into the atmosphere, the atmosphere is changing around the Earth. So where normally we would have been cold is now becoming warm. So warm enough that you're actually seeing here where my finger is pointing 30 degrees centigrade. These changes are creating more activity during the hurricane season. Still, there are changes we can do that will have a positive impact on future generations. There are global treaties set up by the UN that give us the right to reduce our carbon footprint. Um, recycle as much as possible, go green, and I know we use the term clean, green, and serene for Tobago, and really and truly, we should be reducing our consumption of energy. It also means that small islands like ours can look to alternative sources of energy. For instance, we have solar, we have wind, we have water power. We can harness these things to reduce our footprint. Instead of having diesel and gas vehicles, we can now look into the future of having alternate energy like your hybrid cars, your hydrogen buses, your CNG buses, and maybe one day we can be like Norway, which enjoys electric cars.
that run on their streets. The hurricane season will last until November, so emergency responders such as the Tobago Emergency Management Agency, TEMA, are prepared to deal with any impending disaster. Citizens are advised that their homes or businesses should have an emergency checklist that can be easily accessed in case of a natural disaster. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. We have to take a break, but when we return, beekeeping workshop hosted right here in Tobago. Stay tuned, Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. Nati Villa sits on four acres of land which covers the Mount Irving coastline. It was constructed four years ago and accommodates a maximum of six people. The property is located just above the Mount Irving beach. Beekeepers on the island gathered at Blenheim to participate in a three-day training workshop on the beekeeping industry. Here are the details. Across the world, we owe a debt of gratitude to these tiny creatures. Bees are an important part of food production. They pollinate flowers and enable the spread of fruit trees and other important flora. And without bees, there'd be no honey or beeswax. That's why the Division of Food Production, Forestry and Fisheries is keen to introduce more Tobagonians to beekeeping. The division recently hosted a three-day beekeeping workshop to generate interest in and expand the local beekeeping or apiculture industry. Beekeeping should be pinnacle of agriculture in any nation because as we all know without bees what we have no pollination and many minds before has said if the bees were to disappear that would give man four years to live again yeah and right now the bees are disappearing the workshop is expected to improve the production of honey in Tobago and increase participants' knowledge about beekeeping. It also created awareness about the environmental issues affecting the sector. We know that over the last several years, the beekeeping industry in, in Tobago and even Trinidad had to withstand uh, quite a number of negative impacts, not only um, from the emergence of new pests and disease and their management, but also the negative impacts of climate change and what it has done to the flora of, of the island um, the flowering patterns and therefore um, the production of um, honey and other bee products. The workshop saw an increase in participants from last year, with more than 30 people registered. More young people and more women are also keen to get involved. Your course for the next couple of days would involve knowing about the bees, would involve knowing about the environment, would involve knowing about the manipulation of the colonies, so as to produce the main uh, byproduct of the hive, which is honey. This is the second beekeeping workshop held in Tobago in the past year. I'm Kirindi Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. The well-appointed villa was designed by Nut and is spacious with a chef's kitchen and outdoor patio overlooking the ocean. Graduation season is here once again. Students of the Canaan Nursery School officially said goodbye to their teachers as they crossed the stage and received their tokens at the school's appreciation ceremony. Here's more. It's the season for graduations. But instead of a traditional event, one school hosted an appreciation day ceremony to officially send off the little ones to their new schools. Parents and well-wishers of students at the Canaan Nursery School gathered at the Magdalena Grand Beach and Gulf Resort to see their little ones on the stage. This is their 70th Appreciation Day ceremony to celebrate and honor the accomplishments of this group of students. The Canaan Nursery School does not have a graduation exercise. They have an Appreciation Day to really celebrate the charges and also because we believe a graduation at this age, they won't remember. Gongs, rings, and putting parents into real expense, no. But we appreciate them, we celebrate them, and we showcase what they would have learned. I'm not sure if you heard them singing the anthem lustily. So if they didn't do anything else, they know the national anthem. Apart from academics, the Canaan Nursery School teaches students about self-awareness, 
and learning to speak up. The curriculum encourages participation and encompasses teamwork, storytelling, charts, nursery rhymes, drama, singing, dance, games, etc. Self-awareness is encouraged as children are taught the parts of their bodies and the proper names and the differences between a good touch and a bad touch. In this vein, the children are also taught to care for themselves, their belongings, and to be a brother's and sister's keeper. Assemblyman Clarence Jacob, the area representative for Keenan Bon Accord, is advising parents to encourage their children. He says at that tender age, they will believe everything that is said to them. Too much times you hear you're stupid. That is what would calculate in the child system. You do a tish. Use more positive words to your kids. Because what you preach in them and what you, what you emphasize to them, is that what they're going to learn. Founder of the Canaan Nursery School, Ms. Aneta Archer, was also honored for excellent service in helping to mold young minds to become great future leaders. I'm Kundi Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. In order to improve customer service in Tobago, management at Nutty Villa offers you first-class service as the property encourages interaction with the owners. Now, the Central Administrative Services Tobago, or CAST, provides central government services to Tobagonians. In this next report, we fill you in on the responsibilities of this department. Here's more in this report. The Central Administrative Services Tobago, commonly known as CAST, provides central government services to Tobagonians as a department of the Office of the Prime Minister. One such service is the Medical Provision Subsidy. At least 10 people have benefited from this service this year. It assists with medical conditions like throat cancer, brain tumors, and spinal disorders. Some of the services that we provide is the processing of application for refund of airfare, for visit to Trinidad for medical services not available in Tobago. Cabinet has agreed on the provision of a full advance return airfare of $300 for Tobago residents. Additionally, this same provision is available for one adult to accompany that person. The collection of life certificates for government pensioners is also carried out by CAST. The life certificate verifies that a pensioner is alive and can receive a pension check. The department's officers also make home visits to assist physically challenged pensioners in filling out their documents. We also encash government checks, excluding tax returns. Pensioners who are in receipt of pensions in Tobago, if there was not the sub-treasury here, they would have to deposit their checks for a minimum of four days before these checks can be encashed. But with the treasury, they can have their cash immediately. CAS provides its staff as well as elite athletes on the island with access to gym services and various workout sessions. More than 30 employees use the gym on a weekly basis. Crystal O'Neill is one such worker who says she prefers the individual attention provided by the gym instructors and the variety of exercise machines. As a staff member, I decided to utilize the facilities because it is free for us. Right? And also personal reasons, you know, maintain weight, um, to upkeep health then. Right, which is one of the main reasons why persons will exercise. For me personally, I go after work. Right, it is a convenience because after you finish, you go right downstairs. You know, you don't have to travel to go anywhere, and it's free. Right, no additional cost. Cast also facilitates transport services for the president, prime minister, and other government officials who visit Tobago. The Registrar General is another CAST unit where Tobagonians can process their land deeds, adoption papers, death and marriage certificates, and amendments to birth certificates such as the insertion of fathers' names. If you need more information on any of these services, you can call 639-2505. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. 
Coming up next, we explore diabetes and what sufferers can do to prevent further complications. Don't go anywhere. Let's talk to Bagel. We'll be right back. Naughty Villa is a popular choice with returning visitors who have experienced the warmth of the staff here. Now, diabetes is described as a group of metabolic diseases where the individual has high blood sugar. As a diabetic, there are ways to prevent further complications. Pay attention to this report. In Trinidad and Tobago, close to 179,000 people are living with diabetes. Tobagonians account for 12,000 of those cases. Now, one of the major diabetic complications is nerve damage in the feet. It can lead to numbness, undetected injuries, ulcers, and eventually the loss of a leg. So proper foot care is advised. The topic got some much-needed attention at the Surgical Ward Amputee Action Group's Diabetic Foot Care Seminar. It highlighted simple measures that can enhance your quality of life, including cleaning and examining your feet daily as well as monitoring your overall health. The best way to care for your feet is to keep your blood sugar levels under control. And by under control, we mean in the morning when you wake up, your blood sugar is supposed to be between 80 and 130 is the new value. <clears throat> it used to be 120. Um, the new value for this year, 2017, is 130. But you could try, if you keep it lower, no problem. The event also provided other useful advice for diabetics. For example, don't soak your feet in water for long periods. Use an emery board or nail file instead of a nail clipper to keep nails short. Wear comfortable footwear and change socks daily or when wet. You need to find a shoe that's soft inside, right? Not only the soles, but also the sides, the top all around need to be soft and you need to make sure it fits in a comfortable you could wiggle your toes in it right you don't want it too big so when you're walking your foot moving up and down in it because then that will cause rubbing and that could cause chafing which could cause a bruise and lead to problems right participants also learned to look for signs of nerve damage to the feet the symptoms of poor circulation and the risk factors for ulcers and limb loss Nurse Desri Nelson Woodley says foot care sessions will benefit diabetics as well as those who care for them. The vision of the group as well is to empower amputees and their families to achieve their full potential through support, education, advocacy and to prevent further limb loss. And so you may ask yourself, I have already lost a leg, why am I here? As I said, to prevent further limb loss. So we do not want you to become a double amputee. So we want to continue to educate you. The Surgical Ward Amputee Action Group, SWAG, is a voluntary group that provides support to amputees. SWAG was launched in April. To date, it has just over 20 members. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. In an effort to help guests create a memorable Tobago experience, management can arrange tours to explore the island, personalized cooking and spa services. Guests are also encouraged to explore the beach and snorkel. The beach is less than five minutes away from the property. What better way to close off five years of schooling than with a graduation ceremony? Boasting the theme Rising Above Expectations, students of the Roxborough Secondary School officially closed this chapter of their lives. These young people have entered Roxborough Secondary School as students for the final time. They are the graduating class of 2017. The theme for this year's graduation ceremony was Rising Above Expectations. To promote achievement, we started with a one-day retreat for our fifth formers. And we took them away from the school's compound because we wanted to work on their minds. We took them away from the school's compound and we wanted to motivate them to excellence. 
and they have excelled. Several students received awards for academics as well as extracurricular activities including sport. They are also being praised for their perseverance. Don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds that you germinated. It was not easy for us, but despite the positive and negative challenges, we came out of the darkness and stepped into the light of greatness. Young people, I want to say to you this afternoon that rising above expectations, you are to become an example of a positive, self-fulfilling prophecy. Nadine Stewart Phillips, the Secretary of the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, is a former student of the school. In her feature address, she reminded the graduates that they are capable of rising above their challenges. The key to this is faith in God and self-belief that you can conquer all obstacles and win every battle. You must also recognize that your journey requires fundamental cultural and attitudinal changes. You are now charged with building your capacities and capabilities so that you can contribute meaningfully to society. I'm Carolyn Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's now time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear what you, the viewers, have to say. Today we're asking, what precautions can we take if exposed to sargasm seaweed? While you think about it, we'll have a look at who had their say this week. Exposed to the seaweed, it didn't really have no precautions. It's just that you might have to stay away from the beach for a little while. And the, um, the government had to do something to clean it up, but you can't really stop it at all because that comes like part of nature. Yeah? I think that persons should stay away from the beach until the relevant persons take care of the situation and remove them. Just to get people more aware of the presence of it because sometimes you go to the beach and you're looking for it, have a good day, and they don't know that the, the seaweed is in the presence in the water. And some beaches, it's more present than others. If you go to bed and you get tied up in the weeding, it, 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 that is death. The most a person could do is to try to avoid it because the smell isn't pleasant. The contact with your skin could cause many different irritation. You try to go out there and swim, you could get tied up and put your life at risk. I think you should stay away from the beach, the coastline and so on during the period of the sarcasm seaweed is around because Remember that that carrying some some of them some of these weed carry plenty dead fish and all kind of thing and that could be damaging to the human skin and all that. We close another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always we thank you for watching. Please email us with our comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the Bell Garden Beach Cleanup. <laughs>